I'm Gavin Hurley and welcome to another episode of On The Fly. We're here in New Zealand in Southland on the Matau River, one of the most famous rivers in all of New Zealand. They've had a little bit of rain lately so it's a little discoloured, um, but being Australians we can certainly see in there at the moment, it's good by our standards. The fish will be pretty aggressive to feed too because they don't, uh, haven't been able to feed for the last few days with the water being dirty, so they'll be looking for some food as well. So uh, we're looking mainly at the edges and with a bit of luck we'll be able to find a few fish. We've sort of uh, got some now that we can see sort of stacked up along there and uh, we're going to do a what we use like a two fly rig with a dry down to a nymph and uh, give them two choices and I think they're going to take the nymph until a little bit later on this evening when hopefully there's a bit of a, a hatch of, of mayflies and we can get some just dry fly action. So uh, I hope you enjoy the show and we'll like to show you what New Zealand Southland Matara has got to offer. One just down here, just on one of the rocks, and uh, they're a little bit hard to see with this discoloured water, but you just see some movement and then you know it's going to be a fish. So uh, we've just seen him then go a long way to eat like a nymph. So uh, it's just a matter of getting our fly in front of his nose, and I've no doubt we'll take it. We've got a brown nymph with a tungsten bead head. So that it gets down, but it's just a matter of getting it in the right slot, right in his feeding lane. We'll see it come past his nose and he'll eat it. Well, that's the plan anyway. Well there you go, we've, uh, we've got to the Matara, there's a little bit of uh, colour in the water and we've put on a, a, like a nice little nymph there, so it's quite a good fish, particularly when they, they get uh, the power of the river as well behind them, um, they can certainly take a bit of line. So again we go over what we're using, like you need a good quality reel, this is a Galvin uh, which has a great drag system and that's what you need in a river like this dealing with New Zealand fish and a good solid rod, this is an air six weight, again we always mention solid throughout the buck section and just lighten the tip so you can play these good fish. He's not even a big one so uh, he's a good couple of pounds but we'll get him in, get a closer look and we'll catch you a bigger one. Again, not a, not a massive fish, but uh, what we always like to do is net the fish. So uh, get him in there and it stops that fish from getting bashed around on the, on the rocks and really doing himself harm, particularly if you're going to uh, release him. So uh, always use a net, you can get the fly out, get him back in the water and he's good for you next time you come down to uh, New Zealand. So not a big fish by uh, New Zealand standards, but He's a good couple of pounds in, in, in quite good nick, so he's what you'd call a, uh, it's quite, quite silvery as well, so he's what you'd call like a, a fresh fish. With this rain he may well have come up, up the river, so he's quite silver. So a lot of the fish residents might be a lot darker brown, which we'll show you soon too. So uh, still a great fish, any standard. So let's get him back in. Hold him up current and just let him swim at their own time and he'll be right to go. Now when you're really into your fly fishing, it's very important to get you a decent set of wading boots. Something like these Riverworks are ideal, 
nice high ankle support, uh, loaded full of features there, and a good Vibram sole, which is going to be excellent on some of these slimy rocks. They do a couple of different models. Uh, the XRTs are a much stronger boot for a lot of their high country as well. So they're ideal for a lot of your fly fishing areas. Also in um, Iquaz is a, is a great set of boots there as well. Slightly different sort of sole, but it allows you to put in some studs as well. Uh, is, a, is a good setup there for a lot of your rivers, particularly in New Zealand, because you, you need to have a rubber sole in New Zealand. But when you're fishing in Australia, a lot tend to use like a felt sole, which has a much better grip than what rubber is. So um, work out where you're going to spend a lot of your time fishing and buy the appropriate boots to suit your needs. Just been walking up the, the bank here and, and quite often when there has been a bit of colour in the water, the trout, they don't like all this dirt and grit going through the gills either. So quite often you'll find them right up on the bank where it's quite clean water. So we've just spotted one up here, he's probably only a foot or so from the bank. So we need to obviously get a, like a nice cast from a bit of an angle in there, not too far ahead because you don't want your, your fly line going over the top. Just a leader, and with a bit of luck he'll take it. And he did. That was, uh, it's probably hard to see back there, but um, I've got the, uh, the um, I'm sorry, I'm stuck for words, the blowfly pattern on where he's come up, saw that, he's moved a good two or three feet, and sometimes I'll do that to get a nice big dry. So it's obviously, uh, I guess to a trout, it's like a Toblerone, or a great bit of chocolate, you know, so they obviously like it. So he's gone quite a way to get that, so, uh, that's ideal. Makes our job a lot easier. When the cast's not perfect, the fish will help you out and he'll move a metre to the side to get it. It's always important when you're playing fish, what we want to do with the rod is throw them off balance. So uh, if they want to go in one particular direction, instead of just, it's good to hold the rod up high and keep the line away from any snags and things, but also if I want him to go a particular way, I can turn the rod. It's called side strain. And uh, that's what we can do with this fish here. If I want him to come back to this way, I can turn the rod this way and he'll come, just like uh, a dog on a lead. You know, so you can just do that and it just throws the fish off balance. When he's trying to run in one direction, just by turning your rod on either side, he's going to throw him off balance and it just stops him from all his power from swimming in the one direction. He's a good fish too. We just get him in the quieter water there. But he's a good, uh, he'd be a good three or four, three and a half pound, four pound. So, um, yeah, which is ideal. You never get sick of catching, you know, three and four pound fish, particularly on the dry fly. 